Welcome to the wonderful world of the lever. In the last video, we talked about torque and how it makes things rotate about about their center, about the axis, or, or about the pivot. And uh, we said that a lever works on the concept of torque. It's a big, important thing. So we're going to talk about levers. Uh, and we're going to eventually apply our knowledge of torque to help us understand how levers work even more. But the first thing we have to do is define what a lever is. Okay, A lever is basically, uh, if you think about it, a long, it's usually a long piece of uh, stick or wood or metal or it's a long arm of some sort. It could be the handle on something and it's something that we push on, right? So here's a long handle and we push on one end of the handle and we usually push perpendicular and you can see that this looks very much like torque, doesn't it? And the handle has a certain length to it and so that length and the force that we push was called torque. We had in the last video, torque is the force perpendicular times the distance away or the, the length of the handle. Okay, So when we're talking about a lever, we call, let's say, uh, let's go back to our example where we had this, um, uh, this was fastened down. Remember our water pump? Right, The water was coming out of the pump and this was the handle that we used to turn the pump to get the water to flow from the water pump. All right, so uh, we have some names that we like to use, some terminology. The first one is the force with which we push. It's called the effort force because we're making an effort to push on the pump handle. Effort force. Okay, and the uh, spot where the handle pivots is called the fulcrum of the lever, the fulcrum. Or you could think of it as the pivot as well. Now on this particular lever, uh, if we looked inside, the handle would be attached to some sort of valve uh, and perhaps it was moving, uh, maybe it was lifting this, this valve up and down so that the water could come up from the ground and flow out here through the pump. And so the turning of the lever, the pivot, would cause the other end of the valve to go up and down. And so that's what we would call the load. The load. Or sometimes people call it the load force. Right? That would be on the other end of the lever, whatever the lever was working on. So that's one example. Let me draw you maybe something that's a little clearer. Let's say you were trying to move a, a, a large rock. So you have this big rock, and you put a little rock here, and you got a stick, and you stuck it underneath the rock like this. And you stuck it down there, and you grabbed this, and you pulled it this way. There's your effort force. The effort that you're making is you pulling on the lever. And of course, the lever would pivot right here, on the rock, the rock with the small rock would be the full crumb, F U L C R U M, right there. And then what you would be doing is causing a force this way on the rock. Because think about it if you pull this way with a force, you make a torque that causes it to rotate in a clockwise way, which means the other end will also rotate clockwise, causing this force that pushes up on the rock. And hopefully, you get to move the rock, and it goes blah, 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 but it rolls out of the way. And that's the whole point of moving the rock. And so this is called the load, or the load force. Sometimes it's called the load force or the load, OK? All right. So for short, we're going to call this FE, effort force. And we're going to call this for short, load force, FL, so we get our terminology right. All right. Now, there's a couple of ways you can set up a lever. Actually, there's three different ways that you can make a lever. You can make what's called a first class lever. First 
class lever is a lever where you have um, a fulcrum and a load and a force, an effort force and a load force. But in the first class lever, the fulcrum is situated in between. So I'm just going to draw the same type of lever, a, a simple stick. And if you put the fulcrum here, so in other words, just like the one we drew with the rock, all right? And if you push down on this end with an effort force, you can make the lever turn in a clockwise direction, which makes the top turn in a clockwise direction. It pivots around the pivot or the, the, the fulcrum. And that will create a force upwards on this side. And this is called the load force. So in a first class lever, what's important to notice here is that the fulcrum is between the fulcrum is between the effort and the load force. The effort force and the load force. It's in the middle. But that's not the only way that you can make a lever work. The next kind of lever is, um, well, you know what? The best, we did an example of that already, I guess, uh, pushing the rock or lifting the rock uh, with a stick. So we won't do an example of that, but we'll do an example of the other two. The second type of lever is if instead, what if you put the fulcrum right at the end? So you just want to lift up on the end of the lever. And so we're going to lift up this end, and we're going to cause this end to rotate counter or clockwise. That would be clockwise. So this is our pivot point here at the end, but the load is going to be sort of in the middle. There will be a, uh, let's say we put a, an object like a rock right here, and the force is the weight of that rock. This is the, this is the force of the, uh, of the load. Let's call it load. Now I just realized something I did in the picture up here. Um, I think I was thinking one thing and I was drawing another. This arrow, if it's the force of the load, then it would be the weight of whatever object we were trying to lift. So I was thinking one thing and now I realize this should be a downward force. This is the load force because it's working opposite to what we're doing, right? It's trying to stop us. So we want to swing this up. So make that correction in your t if you're taking notes. In the first class lever, the picture should look more like that. All right? We're pushing down, and there's a downward force. Okay? Uh, the only difference is that um, pushing down on this side makes clockwise torque. And so what would happen is there would be what we would call a, a reaction force, or we would generate a force up this way that lifts the rock. But the load itself is the rock, and so technically we should label the load force as the weight of the rock. That was my mistake. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. So you can see here I've done the same thing. I've put the load of the rock down because it represents the weight of this rock and how much it's pushing down, right? And the effort force in order to lift this rock up would be this way. Now, this picture doesn't look like much. You're like, what kind of a lever would you do? Would that be? But if you think about a common device that is a second class lever, did I write second class lever? No, I didn't. Boy, that's two strikes against me. One more strike, and I quit the video, and you get the day off. Second class lever. Uh, this would be a, like a wheelbarrow. Think about a wheelbarrow. I'm going to try and draw a wheelbarrow as best I could. You have this barrel like this, right? And then at the back, you have handles attached, right? Um, I'll just draw one handle. And there's usually like a, a sort of a, a balance thing here, but the wheel is usually right at the front. So there's your wheelbarrow. And so the wheel is actually the pivot. This is the pivot. When you lift up on the wheelbarrow handles, you make an effort force up. And the weight, or the load, is 
all the stuff that's in your wheelbarrow, and you see that the bulk of it would lie behind the wheel. You might get a little bit over here, but the center of this mass would be right here, and it would be creating a weight, which is the load force, which is down here. And the pivot, when you pick up the wheelbarrow, is right here on the wheel, right? That's the pivot point. So you can see it looks exactly like the picture we just drew. It's a second class lever, and we use it to lift loads uh, by making the effort force here and the load force here. So you see what happens, it's the load force is between the effort and the pivot. The, the load force is between the effort force and the fulcrum or the pivot point, the fulcrum. We'll use the fulcrum. Fulcrum. That's a second class lever. Before the fulcrum was in the middle, now the load force is in the middle. Okay, one more to go. And that would be, guess what, the third class lever. A third class lever is a lever that looks something like this. If you were to take your stick and you were to pivot it here on the end, so there is the fulcrum. You were to put your load right here, and you were to lift with your effort force back here. Effort force. And then your load is the weight of this object over here. You would be trying to pull up and create counterclockwise torque to lift this object. This is also a very odd looking lever. And if you look at it, what happens here is that the, it's now the effort force is between the load and the fulcrum. Now, what kind of a lever would this be? Well, here's a I'll try and draw a picture. This is going to be a reasonable picture of an arm. And in your outstretched hand, you're going to be holding on to a can of uh, Coke or something, like soda pop. How does your arm work? Well, inside your arm, there is a muscle right here, which is called the bicep. And the bicep muscle contracts, and it pulls on a tendon. But before I draw the tendon, I'm going to draw here the bone of your arm, which fits here like this. And then there's another bone that sort of joins up at your elbow. In fact, there's two of them out here. And these bones go down here like this. So I'm going to color these bones in black. There we go, black bone this way. And then there's another very fine bone along beside that. There's two bones, but one is all that we need for our picture. In your arm, like this. This goes up into your shoulder and hooks in. There's a little ball end that attaches to your shoulder to make your arm swing around. But this muscle is attached with a tendon like this. Now the place where your arm bends, or the pivot, is right here at the elbow joint. But the force of the muscle is pulling here. Now, it doesn't pull straight up. Uh, it pulls up at a bit of an angle. It kind of pulls that way. That's the effort force. But part of that is up, right? And we won't get into the details of how we deal with forces that are at weird angles, because that's something a little bit past where we need to go. But you can do that with math. So you can still figure out that that's pulling at least partially straight up. And then, of course, the load is the weight of the can over here in your hand. So this tendon, this tendon is like a string, and it's attached over here, and it makes the effort force right here at the tendon. Let me just um, draw that a little better. Makes the effort force right here. Uh, OK, I'll erase this too for now. So it pulls this way. It actually pulls this way 
but it causes a force that pulls right at this spot. Okay, so there's your effort. And so you can see how your arm is a third class lever. If you look at the two pictures, they're almost identical. Fulcrum effort here in between the fulcrum and the load. Okay, so if you wanted a little summary, uh, in the first class lever, who's in the middle? Well, the, the um, fulcrum is in the middle. Fulcrum in the middle. Maybe that's an easier way to remember it. In a second class lever, who's in the middle? Well, it's the wheelbarrow. It's the load force in the middle. Right? Or we were calling it FL. And for the third class lever, who's in the middle? Effort force in the middle. Effort force in the middle. That might be an easier way for you to remember. And we called that FE. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. After you've watched this, I want you to try to come up with some examples uh, in everyday life. And, of course, you can't use mine. So examples of first, second, and third class levers. Uh, see how many you can come up with. Let's say, try to get, try for three of each. Three examples of each of these first, second, and third class levers. And, of course, you can't use um, the stick in the rock, you can't use the wheelbarrow, and you can't use your arm. All right? But maybe there's other parts of your body that you could think of that might work the same way. If you know anything about legs and joints, and maybe you can figure that out. But there's lots of tools. Think about tools. Anything that has a handle is probably a lever. Can openers. Um, well, can openers also have little wheels on them, but, but um, uh, scissors can be thought of as levers. Um, uh, pliers and vice grips. Right? We use things with handles. Think of a, a pair of pliers as a good example of two levers kind of working together. Um, the wheelbarrow is a good example of a lever. Pumps, handles on things, valves, all kinds of things like that probably have some sort of lever uh, involved in them. A wrench is a good example of a lever. Think about a wrench. Uh, yeah, so you go to it. Try to come up with three examples of each of those three classes of lever. And uh, just so you can, you can get an idea of what they're all about. In the next video, we'll talk about how we use uh, effort force and load force to come up with uh, expressions for torque on our levers. And uh, that'll be the end. So for today, it's nice and simple. Just come up with some examples and see what you can do.